Having seen the abnormality of QRS in the form of amplitude, now we see the abnormality of QRS in the form of QRS widening. So, the abnormality QRS can be increased in amplitude or increase in the duration. So, increase in duration, we are going to see what are the abnormalities which are going to produce increase in QRS width and what is the importance of the clinical implication. So, we told you this about this uh, P wave is due to atrial activation, AV nodal delay PR segment, ventricular depolarization is QRS, HD segment and the T wave. So, we also told you that the QRS is uh, uh, ventricular depolarization and the ventricular depolarization is taking a very, very short time. As you can see that when the impulse travels from the sinus node and after AV nodal delay, it passes through the specialized conduction system of the heart very, very rapidly, simultaneously depolarizing both right and left ventricle at a very fast speed because this, this specialized conduction systems are conducting impulse around 4 meters per second or 5 kg fibers. So, that is why both ventricles are depolarized simultaneously and both ventricles are depolarized simultaneously very quickly. That is why the entire ventricular depolarization is over within 0.08 second because this both these ventricular depolarizations are done by specialist conditions of the heart which is traveling at 4 meters per second. That is why your QRS is less than 0.08 second. The duration of QRS is not more than 0.08 second because it takes only 0.08 seconds for my entire ventricular myocytes to get depolarized. What do I mean by depolarization? My positive charge ions are entering the cell making intracell positivity, out cell negativity. So, what is the concept of QRS widening? Why the QRS gets widened? Why the QRS becomes more than 0.98 or definitely more than 0.12 second? So, the concept is whenever portion of my ventricles are not receiving the impulse through the specialized conduction of the heart, that ventricle have to be depolarized through the muscle, the conduction through the muscle and the muscle is conducting at the speed of 0.5 meters per second. So, whenever the QRS is widened, the most common cause of QRS widening is a bundle branch block. So, the bundle branch block what happens is for my one ventricle, for one ventricle, my bundle is not supplying the current. Because of that, what happens is the current has to, electrical current or the electrical activation has to go through the intact bundle to the ventricle, the normal ventricle and has to travel from the normal ventricle to the ventricle for which the bundle is blocked through the muscle which is conducting only at 0.5 meters per second. Naturally, it takes a long time for the ventricle to be depolarized for which the bundle is blocked and this results in QRS widening. It is not only delay due to slow conduction of the impulse and also you must understand in bundle branch block, the two ventricles are not depolarized simultaneously. One ventricle for which the bundle is intact is activated first and then the ventricle for which the bundle is blocked is activated last. So, because of the two ventricles are activated at different times, once again constitute the QRS widening. So, this is the concept to understand the QRS widening, especially the bundle branch block. So, you can see that here that we have told you that it takes only uh, 30 milliseconds for the entire uh, ventricle muscle to get my ventricular impulse if I have an intact specialized conduction system of the heart. So, this is going to be abnormal whenever my conduction system is going to be blocked. So, that is why my QRS is 0.08 seconds or 80 milliseconds. So, once again we revise our concept about normal ventricular activation in chest leads. So, that will give us an idea. So, how the bundle branch block is going to alter my QRS complexes in chest leads. So, here to diagnose bundle branch blocks, we have to primarily concentrate on chest leads. 
because it is going to be abnormal depolarization in horizontal direction. So, that is why we have to concentrate on chest leads. So, for to understand the normal ventricular depolarization, the first area to be activated in the ventricle is interventricular septum. So, interventricular septum is activated from the left bundle from left to right. So, this results in a small R wave in V1 and small Q wave in V5, V6. Then there is a simultaneous activation by the intact right bundle of the right ventricle, intact left bundle and physicals of the left ventricle. There is a simultaneous activation of the ventricle by rapidly conducting specialized conditions of the heart. But the net vector because of the thick muscle mass will be deviating to the left. So, this results in a deep S wave in V1 and tall R wave in V5, V6, but the QRS duration is usually around less than 0.08 second, means the QRS duration is not exceeding more than two small squares. So, that is the importance of the uh, intact conduction system. One, they are conducting impulse very rapidly. Second, both ventricles are depolarized simultaneously. That is why the QRS is narrow. So, you can look at here beautifully that the initial R wave and initial Q wave is due to septal depolarization which is going towards right and the terminal net gross depolarization or the ventricle depolarization is coming to the left resulting in tall R wave in V5 and V6. This is a normal conduction. 